First things first, you need your arrows, epoxy. I'm using Gorilla brand. I don't think it really matters. Silver Sharpie, veins. For the tack arrows, I'm using the, the hybrids from AAE, the small ones. I think they're, I don't know how tall they stand, but they're two and a half inches long. Super small, super light. Some sort of adhesive remover. A lot of people use denatured alcohol. Um, this stuff works too, this goof off. It removes latex paint, adhesive and glue. Asphalt and tar. I'm going all over the place. I know I'm just picking up what's in front of me, but vein glue, some cotton swabs. You could use the wipes they come with to clean the shaft prior to installing the veins, but it's gonna be pretty clean after the goof off, so not really necessary. You will need a arrow squaring tool. I got this one from G5, pretty much a must. The building arrows, an arrow spinner helps. Um, this one's from Sirius Archery, really anyone will work. Fletching jig, this one's from Boning. I think I got it off Amazon for 30-ish dollars. Works great, it does straight, right, left, and uh, if you adjust it way down past the marks here, you can actually get a pretty good helical. Arrow saw and a grain scale. This one's from Last Chance Archery. And it comes with this little cup holder thing, um, so you can put arrows and knocks and inserts and you know field points in it. I guess first things first is chop these fletchings off. And it's important to remove your knock when you're gonna glue in inserts because if you don't, it creates a vacuum chamber in the arrow and that will cause, since the glue is not set, the epoxy is not set, it'll actually cause it to push the insert out. It'll wanna keep pushing out. So remove the knock first. So what I do is just take a knife and start them. So, with ones like that, what I do is take a vegetable peeler, stand over the trash can, and just keep doing that until it's all clear. This is actually pretty clean. What I'll do next is take this soft foam block. It's got real fine sandpaper on it. And I'll just sand this down. While I'm doing it, I'm slowly rotating it. Take a wet paper towel. Wipe off that carbon dust. And take a dry one. And then you can kind of feel, I can feel there's still some more glue. So hit it again. Pretty firm pressure. Slow rotation. Dry. Perfect. So now you can take the dry, take your goof off. A little bit of that on there. Clean the end of it real good. And now, you have a perfectly clean arrow shaft. So with this saw uh, from Carbon Express, you can see you get your tape on the back. So this, this is where your arrow goes. The back of this right here lines up with your measurement. So right now 
it's on 25 and to confirm that so that'll be 25 carbon to carbon I want 26 overall since this insert the arrow actually goes up into here it'll give me 26 even because this sticks out an inch past your carbon normally when I cut arrows I cut them outside because carbon dust is terrible for you but I'm making one cut for video purposes just do it in here Got the saw out of the way. So now take your silver sharpie and coat the end of the shaft before, after. I do it on both ends, knock end two, just to double check that both ends are square. And put it in your squaring tool. And rotate it. Should only take a couple passes. No more sharp sharpie. That was a knock end. A little more. Here we go. Put that away. the spinner check it point ends perfect knock him as a slight 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 wobble but probably won't be noticeable now and mix up some epoxy. So I don't need much, I'm just doing one arrow right now. The rest of the 12 I've already cut and glued in. So, a little dab of that in there, making a mess. Make sure and seal this back up good. Otherwise you'll be going to the store to buy more. And take a whatever, some sort of stick. Mix that around. It's two part epoxy, you wanna make sure it's mixed real well. And if you're doing a dozen, or you know, any good amount of arrows, you wanna have everything laid out and be quick about it because this stuff's got like a five minute set time meaning it starts to harden after five minutes coat the end of that thing and when you press it in push it in whatever a little ring's gonna come out and actually go on the outside of it also so take a paper towel wipe off any excess and that's it. You got to wait for this, wait for this to set up. And the cure times 24 hours, but like I said, it's nine, whatever right now. So I'm going to set this aside. I'll come back after dinner or something. And that should be, it should be set hard enough where I can put the knock back in and, and fletch this thing and not have to worry about it. So that's it for now. See you tonight.
All right, the wind's supposed to pick up this afternoon, so I wanted to get out here and do some shooting before that. Really just kind of working on my follow through and, and kind of playing with stabilizers to see um, what holds better all in, in prep for tack, which we're uh, February 20th right now, over three months out. I like shooting anyway. Long distance shooting's fun. The target is at 49, just a little warm up. These are the arrows that I shot at TAC last year. The B, if anybody remembers the Beeman ICS Hunter, six and a half millimeter, 400 spine. And I mean, these are beat up, rusty. I think this tip you can't even get out of this insert. Um, they're probably bent. You know, if I put them in an arrow spinner, I bet there's quite the wobble to them. But I got these with a three fletch max and then those hybrids I was talking about four fletched and these ones flew like darts these ones I, I'm pretty sure this is gonna be my setup so I think these were like 383 grains I fling some arrows here at 49 and then uh, really just work on form I ordered a new sight so once the new sight gets here I'll sight in sight in for the new arrows the the rip TKOs shoot from there so we're at 80 now I just shot five shots and realized that the camera was on hyperlapse mode but anyway GoPro down there on the target still might be dead by the time I get down to it I didn't even think to check the battery before I left the house so 80 yards three fletch max green knock up first winds picking up Again, these arrows are gonna be all over the place probably, but this is just for the purpose of shot execution, holding on target, walking myself through the shot, all that. Can't tell where that hit, forgot my binos too. Actually, I think my binos are in the truck, which I'm shooting over the top of my truck. Probably not the greatest idea, but I've had worse. All right, four fletch hybrids, green knock. I bet not a one of these arrows weigh the same. shaking at the end. Three fletch backs, two whites and a red. I bet you a couple of these arrows, at least one of them's been through a deer. I've had them for years. They've all been in the ground. I'll grab my binos for the next round, but I want to do this before that GoPro dies. Four fletch hybrids, orange knock. And the last three fletch max with the orange knock. Bottom of the target. Well, let's go check them out. Given they're not very consistent arrows, that's decent groupage. But a lot better. This thing's gonna die. It wasn't, you know, obviously it wasn't that great of a group, but they all seemed kind of low. So I'm gonna move this to 81 and try that. 
last night I was shooting those uh, TKOs and they weigh about the same as these arrows but I don't know what it is just the flights better or you know the knocks better or whatever with with this sight on 20 I had to stand at 39 to get it to hit seems pretty jacked to me but I shot both three fletch and four fletch I guess they're just that much better but anyway so I put the sight tape back on and I didn't put it back to where it was but I know this sight bottomed out at 95 so I put the tape back on the wheel I was trying other tapes and bottom the sight out cycled the wheel to 95 so I think it's off like a yard but anyhow shut up crow shut up no one cares. Oh my god. Whoa. I ended up I ended up smoking that that arrow that hit low. I pushed the the tip and insert and everything, shoved that back in the arrow, blew that apart. The knock flew off. I don't even know where that landed. So that one lives in the truck now. The arrows I know these four fletch are the ones I know shoot for that tape. These ones are heavier and are naturally going to hit lower. So, I mean, that's not horrible. Moving it a yard more definitely helped bring it up. I'm going to stretch it out a little further back into the wood line. I just like seeing arrows fly a long way. It's really satisfying. All right, move back. Like 90 and a half yards. I set my tape on 92. Hopefully that makes up the difference, but so this is the HHA Kingpin or Optimizer Kingpin. Shout out Neil Pendleton. He hooked me up with this site uh, last year and it's a great site. I just wanted to upgrade. I shoot the Matthews V3, which is two bows ago now. It's 27 inches. I have a 60 pound draw, so I need light arrows. And I need as much range out of my sight as I can get and the new one's gonna be better for that but anyway I run into clearance issues get out of here branch I, ha I can't have the cock feather up with these it won't clear that one felt better Top. Missed it. This one felt good. Just outside of the middle. These are kind of all over the place left, and then that one. Missed it entirely. I think the wind, the wind is a factor for sure, but I think I'm going to shoot again. That was close, that was decent, that one. And then this one. Uh, yep, smoked it. I ain't gonna fly straight now, boys and girls. And here's the knock. So, I'm either gonna keep shooting or do some shed hunting or a little of both. It's beautiful out right now.
could probably get down to a t-shirt and be all right but i'm gonna see you back at the house and fletch that arrow up got our arrow so i got this switched to four fletch and but these three lines so you got two degree left the middle is just a straight and then two degree right so I drop this down slightly past two degrees for the for the helical um, to the right and I will be trying I'm pretty certain that I'm not gonna go with that three fletch setup because it's been sitting leaning up against the wall for a while I am gonna use one of these Oh, that whole thing. Jeez, that's a lot. Uh, clean the end of this. Put a knock back in. Doesn't really matter where, because I'm going to orient it. So put this in the jig. Get four of these. And I have mine set on an even inch. And glue, you don't need a lot. Just gonna end up wiping, wiping most of it off after it squeezes out the sides. I always rotate it toward you. I'll show you too. I was talking these were gonna be out of sorts. See that? It's not as bad as I thought it was going to be, but that's quite a lot of wobble. It's on the knock end too. And this is the other one, the only ones I have left. That knock end's good, but that one's way out. any excess glue that's it four flesh with a little bit of a helical Let's see what one of these I gotta go through and weight match the the points go through that whole process with the arrows but Let's just see what this one weighs. 380.6. That is a good arrow for tack. I'm excited for it. My sight should be coming in a couple days. And then I got three arrows. These three had a slight wobble to them, but very little. But I'm going to fletch these up. And these are going to be the arrows I use to sight in the new sight in case things go awry. I'm not smoking my good arrows. So, that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and um, catch you on the next one.